I'm going to call the Town Council Finance Committee meeting for Tuesday, June 11, to order at 9.35 a.m. And thank all my colleagues on the committee for being here. Um, it says on the uh, posting outside the door that this uh, room is scheduled for us for three hours. And I have um, want to assure everybody that um, <laughs> we're not going anywhere near that. Uh, and uh, but we do want to get go forward. So um, I'm going to stick with the agenda um, or propose to see if anybody else has anything just to add, um, say that under other unanticipated business, I'm going to have a very set of brief comments about um, percent for art because that will be on the agenda a couple of weeks from now, and it's um, only purpose today is to make sure that we've formulated um, our discussion enough that we get the information we need. So that's the plan. But the first thing on the agenda for today is uh, the 2019 budget amendments that are required. And uh, Sonia is going to um, explain what the amendments are. and. This is different, um, and you might add this reminder about um, the fact that the way the town meeting voted budgets was different from the way the council voted the budget. So that uh, while this was a traditional thing that was done at town meetings frequently, it's uh, going to be less of a need in the future. But uh, why don't you please uh, explain what the two transfers are and. Uh, how the process works a little bit. All right, thank you. Um, so the order in front of you is transferring, as Mr. Steinberg uh, mentioned, we voted our budgets by functional area at town meeting. So that was general government, public safety, public works, um, community services. So when there was a shortage in one and savings in another, we typically moved it rather than asking for a supplemental appropriation. And um, this is the last time we're going to have to do this. And I'm a little excited about that. But um, <laughs> we've had a lot of savings in some functional areas due to um, vacant positions. And then we've had a lot of other deficits in other um, departments because of some transitioning that was done. But we've got savings to outweigh that. And there are, they are in the functional areas they need to be, so I don't have to ask to cover those like I am here. Uh, typically, we have a snow and ice deficit. And I'm asking you to move $115,000 from the general government section to uh, Public Works Snow and Ice to cover that deficit. And the second part is a transfer of 73875 from, from general gov government to public safety to cover uh, raises that were voted for 2019 in fire department and to cover, we had some equipment that um, emergency replacement of a scuba compressor, which is to fill the air tanks for the fire department. And it was slated to be on the capital plan, I believe, in 21 or 22, but it died before we made it there. So we had to replace it. They replaced it using the operating budget with the knowledge that we would cover this at year end. And that was about 28,000 of that 73,000. And it's been taken off the capital plan. So, um, and that's it. Any questions? Pretty simple. So um, we would expect that. Have you scheduled this for a specific meeting for the we'll council? Do this on um, July one. Excuse me. We will. Do, I thought no. it was Monday night. No, I think we're doing it Monday night. We're doing it Monday night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we need a recommendation from the committee. Um, so I want to see if there are any questions about. Process generally that piece that was talked uh, at the beginning, or about the specific um, transfers. Um, I, I feel that Sonia did a good job of explaining, so I feel I understand it. Thank you. 
And I think that the one thing that I would want to add um, is that uh, we did vote all of the five functional areas for town government as a single amount so that um, there would be um, ease of administration of the finances of the town, but that um, I assume that it will continue to be the practice as it has been in the past that you will be providing um, the council with quarterly reports that actually detail each of the areas um, so that uh, we will still have uh, regular comprehensive reports about um, expenditures and revenue and how that has gone against the projections that we started with at the beginning of the year. Absolutely. Um, the quarterly reports that Mr. Steinberg is referring to are on the accounting website and um, third quarter reports there at the end of the year. There'll be a final report. It will show all the departments, which departments were in deficit, which were not. Um, and we will continue to keep our books in the same format as we have in the past. When was the last report done for the... Uh... Through March 31st, it's on the website. Uh, didn't send it, have, I don't think we've sent it to this I, committee. I have not sent one to any committee this fiscal year at all. I think just the transition and the confusion and I'm waiting for the town manager to kind of guide me on which committees that was going to, whether I was going to present those in front of the council as a whole or just the finance committee. And I think we just aren't there yet. Uh, let me suggest that at the meeting on Monday, the 17th, uh, we put a motion up that it just go automatically to the finance committee for a review and then, you know, just communicate it as part of a regular report from the finance committee to the council. Unless there's something exceptional like a huge deficit, mm -hmm. I don't think we need to have it on the council agenda. Okay. Okay. It works. Yes, Kit. Uh, do you, does the general government side build in a certain cushion so that it, when we need this, so I'm looking at next year as well. So when we need to do this kind of transfer because of unanticipated expenses in some other operating budget? No, we don't, we don't um, purposely build in a comf uh, cushion, but we have, that's where we keep all the salary um, increases when, um, when all the contracts are in negotiation. We don't put them into the operating budget or into the other functional areas. We wait until year end and move it. So a lot of times, sometimes there's vacancies in those functional areas and you don't have to move the money because we don't move the money if we don't have to. But at year end, when we do the next budget, it's all built into those functional areas. So it kind of gets spread out. So sometimes that's there, not always. And general government is just a better place. It's easier to control. It has um, benefits in there and a lot of things. So there's a lot of things moving around. So we usually don't have a problem. This past fiscal year, we voted our, I mean, we went out to bid for our property and casualty insurance, and we saved close to 100000 overall on the bid. Um, it's a new company that we're using, so we, we didn't ask to reduce our budget because we don't know until we get at least a year or two under our belt, we don't want to make any adjustments to the budget, but that's there. So there are things that happen, which the um, quarterly report will spell out to everybody. So um, I think we're pretty well ready to move on. The only other thing for my colleagues on the committee who've not dealt with this before, um, one of the things that we always are dealing with is that um, ultimately we have the Department of Revenue looking over our shoulder all of the time and uh, that's part of their job to do that for all uh, municipalities um, and we're, they make sure that we're not allowed to uh, carry a deficit not cover an expense but there is an exception and the exception is snow and ice removal so that um, because they recognize that that is such a frequent uncertainty for communities. Uh, 
so technically, um, a community can end the year with a deficit in, in that one category, but uh, I don't recall us ever having to do that. No, uh, we've always made the adjustment that we're doing here. We've always been able to make the adjustment, but it's just one of these things to be aware of, uh, just because you get it there. But I think we can, at this point, um, I would take a motion that the Finance Committee recommends appropriation and transfer order for the um, amending the 2019 budget. Um, I, Second. Any discussion? All in favor indicate with raised hands. So, aye, aye. Aye. Okay, so there's, it's five to zero. And uh, that makes it a unanimous vote of the committee. Can I just mention one more yes. thing? Also in the past, we had the reserve fund transfer of $100,000. So if we had deficits in other places, the Finance Committee had the authority to just do a budget transfer for emergencies. So we also had that in the past. I just wanted. Uh, I just wanted to get one other thing straight on this motion that we automatically refer. It's a quarterly budget report. Yes. Thank you. And when does it usually come? Like one month after the end of the quarter, or I try. <laughs> that's, that's just fine. I try to yeah. get it done as soon as possible. We have to make sure that all the revenues that come in that are getting recorded in the previous month. So sometimes that could take the whole um, subsequent month to get that done. But yeah. thank you. Yes. Go ahead. Um, I'm kind of wondering about um, budgeting for weather-related things. Um, and I guess I would recommend that we put more money in for weather things, because besides snow and ice, there's potential flooding. I mean, I just, our weather is just so chaotic. Um, also, I guess in that little pile, I would include trees, because there can be crazy tree uh, die-offs related to bad weather. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also could have these little spot tornadoes. I mean, I've, I've had them here and lost like six trees at a time. Um, I just feel that our weather is crazy at this time. So wouldn't it be better to put more money in that, and then if we don't use it, then it's really nice? I think that would be great. It's just the, um, our resources are, are, are short. But yeah. So when we, the committee meets for its next meeting on the 25th, Fifth, if it's possible to get the most recent quarterly report sent to the committee. I don't anticipate we need to spend a lot of time talking about it, but it would give the committee an opportunity to see what the reports look like by looking at the most recent report. I'll send them out this afternoon. Thank you. Uh, or you can just send the link so that people know how to find it either way. Can I just ask if we have someone officially taking minutes? Yes, we do. Okay, thanks. Shalini is, thank you. Uh, okay, so moving along, then the next um, item uh, we want to talk about is the capital plan process. And uh, have turned to review. We postponed our vote till today on recommending the capital plan, I believe, for the council until after last night's um, forum. So we will need to um, recommend the capital plan order to the uh, council at this point, I believe. Uh, but um, That's correct. so I. See if there's, um, do you want to start? Do you have any initial comments, uh, Sean? Um, I think we also talked about at the last JCPC meeting, having a conversation today a little bit about um, the decision process around the four um, building projects and at least have an initial conversation about what we think would be a good process for that to, to follow um, over the summer and into the fall. Yes, and I was going to get to that too. I wanted to try and separate out the specifics of the next year's budget, um, go, what we need to do in council action from the process right. a little bit, but um, 
I think that they're both there, and then we get into the third question, which is actually a separate um, item, which is um, the analysis tool. Right. Um, yes, Sharon. Okay, um, uh, so my, my question on turning to the capital plan um, is if, if, as we take a vote on what's being recommended for FY20, are we also looking at the way the 10 years are set up? Because I've sent a few comments in on things that I don't think should show up in the 10-year plan um, that if we could address them. And the example I'll give is the library is put in both for the amount that the library said it would be on budget general fund and the six million they would raise separately. Yeah. Um, and then, and I'll stay just with library, sure. and you came back to me with another point about library, that there's a um, two, couple hundred thousand dollar sorter that's spread over two years mm -hmm. that had, one is the books and one is the cataloging the books. And during the JCPC meetings, the head librarian said they actually wouldn't buy that separately in the current building, and its costs are included in the grant proposal. So I felt that the 200,000 shouldn't show up in regular because it actually doesn't exist, mm -hmm. and it affects 2021 and 2022. Right. So I'm, these questions are about the out years. And then what Sean said back, which is also true, is looking out into the future, we have nothing budgeted for the library, right. for capital, because they're assuming everything will be taken care of with the grant, um, whereas the schools have some interactive that if we got a grant X year, you wouldn't have to do the uh, roof. So it's it's partly an issue maybe for next year of a way of displaying it that with the grant, this is the way the next years look like. Without the grant, this is the way it looks. Because in some cases, we're counting the debt for a new school and we're still right. fixing the roof, which is what then makes the out years look worse than they might be. Right. You know, so just trying to think of, so s some of it is literally, why do we have it there? And then others is, how do we display it differently? Yeah, um, and Sonia, you can let me know if you agree or disagree. My perspective is the, the vote that, or the recommendation you'll make is primarily on FY20. Um, we know the out years need some more, really just time from JCPC that just wasn't there this year because of the, the schedule and the process. Um, but I agree, there's lots of things in those out years that I think we just need to have more conversation at JCPC how they're presented. Um, and again, you mentioned the schools, which I think is a good one. If the if the schools were approved for a new building in December, there's several millions of dollars of projects that would probably come off of the out years in terms of roof projects. Um, we put them on there because we wanted to keep them on the radar for people to know that if the school is not approved at some point soon, that those are going to be real needs. Um, but that's how the schools chose to present that information, which was different than how the library presented their information. They took off the stuff um, that they would have to do if their project um, wasn't approved um, or didn't go through. So I think it's, that piece, I think, needs a lot more conversation at the JCPC level um, for those out years. But I think for this group and for the recommendation, I think it would be primar primarily focused on just the FY20 projects. Um. Stay with for a second with the order that we have to vote at the next meeting, and you made a reference to that in a, a moment ago about what is the scope of the order. I was trying to look, but my recollection of the order, and I'm uh, not getting to it real fast, is that it, it only approves the um, expenditures recommended for the next fiscal year, it is um, the, the order itself has no reference to the uh, five-year plan or 10-year plan. Correct. It's only for fiscal year 20. So we, what we would be recommending if we uh, recommend the order as presented is just the section of the JCPC report that lists the specific expenditures recommended for the next year. Correct. And it's just the cash capital, it's not the borrowing. The borrowing can be done when we're closer to the projects and closer to a, a more realistic number. Yeah. 
the borrowing was put into separate orders for that reason. Exactly. And uh, the three borrowing items, we, we, we're not going to take that up at this meeting. Correct. So and it is four? the capital expenditures yeah, from the budget, from the, uh, from the actual FY20 um, one budget. But we are going to take budget. up the J or did we already do all of the other JCPC actions? We did, didn't we? Uh, the Finance Committee voted the recommendation. Yeah, the recommendations, we I'm sorry, recommendations for CPA. I'm switching gears entirely. Did we, we already voted all of the actions necessary for CPA except for the SRO at 132 North Yes, Andrew. I believe. Okay. Thank you. So, Andy? Yes. Um, so then, uh, if I understand this, um, I don't have to worry about how I'm going to wrap my head around the whole five, ten year process with all the interactions. We just have to do one little piece at a time, because that would be a lot easier to think about. Just doing if the, cur the, the, current. the, the current year. year. Yeah, year. that would be great. Yes. Um, the council is not actually committing itself to the specifics of a plan, of, a, of the long term plan. Mm -hmm. The long term plan is really a um, planning process, and therefore it's always uh, in movement. And uh, but the one thing that specifically does have to be voted is the piece that we're talking about. And uh, I'm trying to think, what we, I, I'm finally found the piece that. In the yes. report we got last night, we're, as I understand it, if it's the cash side, it's the 3.5 million that's cash. So we're, we're not even voting on the intention to borrow for. No, we are not. We're not voting any borrowing authorizations. So proposed order 2005 that was presented when we um, presented all of the orders to this committee and to the council. It was the capital program appropriations. And it is recommending, it is an order to um, the, the sum total of three million five hundred forty three dollars eight hundred excuse me, three million five hundred forty three thousand eight hundred ten dollars be appropriated for the purchase, repair, and installation of new and then it goes on and it breaks it down into three pieces along the lines that were presented last night and have been presented previously with the sum total for equipment, buildings, and facilities. Um, but, and it gives, is the source of funds that it is all money being raised and appropriated. It does not um, deal with anything whatsoever with future years. It is, that is the extent of the order. So uh, I think that what we need from the committee, if the committee so wishes, is a motion to recommend to the council um, approval of appropriation order FY20-05 as presented to the council in the, at the uh, June 3rd meeting. Yes. I just have a clarification question to understand the process a little bit. I'm still confused as in when do the district councilors, when can they make recommendations? Or I know we can't increase the budget and all that, but when do, like, like when I keep hearing about bus, you know, we don't have bus shelters or um, people complaining about bike paths and stuff. So w what is the time for counselors to make recommendations or have a discussion about that? I think that's actually an important question. It's, um, we need to discuss that as the next agenda piece where we said we would separate out talking about the budget that we have to adopt for the next year and the adoption of the year, uh, of and then the process 
for the following year, FY21. And the reason that we're in sort of an awkward place is um, with all of the budget, not just with capital. Uh, this was the transition year from the former form of government to the new form of government. And uh, the questions that you're raising are just, are not exclusive to uh, the capital budget, but actually to the budget as a whole, that uh, a process of discussion and establishment of guidelines needs to be um, placed into the process in the, um, for the fall as it had been uh, the practice of the prior select board and finance committee to do that. Um, but where we are is dealing with a budget that was, you know, in process and being developed when we were inaugurated as a council. So, uh, still, um, is there a, anyone who feels that they would make the motion to recommend appropriation order 2005 as presented at the June 3rd meeting for the council I adoption? Move. I so move. Second. Okay, so there's a motion that's been made and seconded. Any further discussion on that? Okay. All in favor indicate, is I raising hands and saying aye? Aye. Yeah, so it's five to zero. And uh, Sonia, can I just request that when we post uh, the minutes for today's <coughs> meeting, um, that I, I can probably find it, that we also just post that order, <coughs> you know, so that people will see what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. I can send it to you because yeah. I now have it. Yeah, and so I'm just saying it's an easier thing if we call it uh, order number 20-05, <laughs> that they see the content of it. Yeah, I'm um, actually the prior, I'm trying to look if we had a transfer order. I guess we did, but it was a different transfer. Well, if you give it a number, we'll we'll have that for the meeting, for the council meeting itself. I think we've done what we need to do. So let's uh, get into the discussion then, uh, which Shalini started talking about, which is the JCPC and Finance Committee process for uh, next year for um, a capital process, and uh, already making a note of a piece that Shalini j just said is uh, saying more about not just the committee but the council um, recommendations and. Uh, So let me just, yes, go ahead. Well, I, you, we've, you've done some of this in the schedules that have been made, but if we had to, um, kind of like a budgeting schedule for dummies, which would be more detailed as to when we ask this kind of thing, when we look at that, um, kind of going forward, because there's so many steps and so many ways that we need to pin it down so we know when we go to our constituents, when there's gonna be a hearing because when this when this level of decision gets made um, in the in the long unfolding process, I think that's the goal over the summer is to develop such a schedule. Yeah. And uh, you know, we had talked about trying to do that at the July meeting. And the reason that we had come up with the July meeting is by then we might have our additional uh, non-voting. Uh, so resident members of the committee and uh, so it would make it logical that they would be involved in the process from the beginning. Um, JCPC met on June 6th and um, I'm working on a document right now that I will be able to complete and forward to you hopefully by our next meeting. 
but I've tried to in that break down what the general discussion was, and then I was going to try and pick out some pieces that really relate to this committee. Uh, but I'll give you, uh, first of all, I broke it into seven separate categories of discussion that took place. One is about how we orient new members of JCPC, the overall process, communications, and that communications includes communications between the members uh, and the boards or committees that um, sent them to JCPC, uh, the role of the manager in the process, uh, citizens' requests, which has been a part of the process the last couple of years, and I think was the JCPC um, is in, uh, endorsing, continuing the citizen um, request part of the process. Other funding, uh, which is what our relationship is to what we know about grants and uh, other types of funds that support capital, including um, our relationship to the CPA process. And then the last thing, which Dorothy just alluded to, is the timeline for the process. So those are the pieces that JCPC felt that we needed to pay some attention to. And uh, they do not have uh, another meeting scheduled. It's not that they are unwilling to meet, but there's no purpose in their scheduling any further meetings because the last process was done and it's actually the tradition had been to conclude with kind of the overall summary. Uh, it struck me as uh, the question was raised about uh, how things like the bus shelter um, example that Chalini gave came up and it could have arisen as a citizen request, of course. Um, it did not. Other things did come in as citizen requests, as was reported in the JCPC report. But um, I wonder if we should, as uh, is, is the next round of this document comes, uh, talk about citizen requests and council recommendations. Uh, and. Uh, build that into the, uh, the process because it, goes be it will go beyond JCPC and I want to get our piece. Yeah, and I, I think um, we haven't done liaisons yet um, officially, but the, there are a couple key committees that relate to all of this. So TAC, in theory, would be prioritizing bus stops, crosswalks, sidewalks, um, and that has the potential the way it's set up to influence what DPW then does with funds. So just trying to think of, you know, it, which point and which venue you're bringing it up so that people don't have to go to the TAC meeting to talk about something and then the JCPC th meeting to talk about something, but for people to understand um, a clear path forward. And they um, have a new little, a new little two-person or with some uh, uh, residents added, a way of ranking, you know, when they look at what things come in to have things rise up to a priority so they could sequence it. So if you said six bus stops, what, where would be first, second, third, fourth, you know, to think of over time. So they're trying to think through a way of feeding that into the DPW. And it's not there yet, but just it's another committee that interacts with JCPC, as does CPAC, yeah. Yeah, Sean? Yeah, along those lines, it may make sense in the future. Microphone. Along those lines, it may make sense to have TAC present to JCPC at some point about what projects have come to them and what their backlog looks like and how many are what priority. Um, that could help inform JCPC as well in terms of how much gets allocated towards roads and sidewalks um, if they heard early on in the process from, from that committee. Well, one of the things we've talked about but we haven't formalized is which members of the councils are following which committees. Right. And so, for example, George Ryan is going to tack try, just really focusing on trying to get speed bumps on Fearing Avenue. Nothing happens quickly and there's no promises yet. Um, 
So rather than us all kind of dipping in here and there beyond some, some things to familiarize ourselves, we need to get a kind of a list of who has decided they're going to follow and then be able to report to us as a council. And that was my comment about liaisons. I'm going to tack also for a longer list of issues, uh, but, but just trying to understand the process that they're evolving because uh, they prioritize then. So they don't respond to just fearing and then Summer Street and right. Right. other requests for speed bumps, crosswalks, bus stops. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm just looking around to see if there were any other. So I think that probably the uh, most difficult this part of the discussion in some ways is um, the JCPC's history was that it was originally appointed as a mechanism for the school committee and the library trustees and at that point the select board and the finance committee as it existed to work together to think about the big picture big projects and uh, it kind of evolved a little bit into the year-to-year -year expenditure review also but uh, the reason that it was created as the Joint Capital Planning Committee to do that is uh, in order to uh, try and build some consensus amongst those major elected boards in particular, um, about how these decisions get made. And, uh, you know, there's obviously, right now, we have the obvious piece that we have the library that has an interest, the schools that have an interest, and the towns that have an interest in major building projects, and, uh, which will be the next item that Sean's going to uh, help us to, to look at. But, uh, you know, the question then comes as to how we honor JCPC's role in that, but also have the appropriate role for the council, recognizing that JCPC ultimately is making recommendations that the council makes decisions, and we are a committee of the council. So it's like there has to be a smooth flow between the three bodies that all exist in the charter, and I think I'll have, we want to honor all of them, but we want to make it work. So I just wanted to point that out. I didn't know if there was any discussion people wanted to have about that topic, but um, clearly JCPC was feeling that they need to spend more attention in the next year on the question of major projects and the input that they might provide through their boards. Is that, Lynn? You know, I, I've thought more about this, and, and Andy and I have discussed it on many occasions, as well as with Paul. In fact, JCPC originally started because of the big projects, not the small ones. Mm -hmm. But then we didn't do any big projects for a long time, and so they took over the small ones. But the world was different in that the big projects would emerge then with JCPC finance on through the select board and on to town meeting. So what I think we're trying to avoid is having two committees look at big projects as well as the council, because ultimately the council makes the decision, except for when we take it out for the vote and then the voters make the decision and ultimately they do anyway. So what we talked about last time was having a, couple, a joint meeting or a couple of joint meetings with JCPC and the Finance Committee. And I increasingly like that idea because it gives the signal clearly that we want all of the groups that have capital projects involved in the discussion and yet we recognize that ultimately it has to go through finance onto the council. So even if we, you know, 
as we set up a process for doing the big buildings. If we could just build in those joint meetings, I think would make a lot of sense. Um, I, I think that would be good, but I'm, I'm feeling the need for another level of analysis. And um, Lynn is a member of JCPC, and I know that Kathy's been attending. And before we do a joint meeting with them, I would like just some kind of free thoughts about how the two systems committee, how, how the two bodies interact and maybe some ways in which that could or should be changed. Yeah, I think that that's true. The, re the reality is from, the, from day one, JCPC is only a recommending body. It, it's not a decision-making body. And it recommends to the town manager, whereas finance committee recommends to the council. Sure. And I think, so going in the, in the past, JCPC's purpose was to help that the merit of the projects um, and the need for the projects, whereas finance committee is solely focused on just the financial piece. And correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. Steinberg, because you've been on all those boards. Um, but, it, but what we heard at the last JCPC meeting is that maybe that's not the role going forward for JCPC to get into the nitty gritty of the merit of the projects in the future, partially because of the amount of time it took to do all that and it, it limited us from looking at the bigger picture um, because we spent so much time sort of on the, the very small projects. So, but I think in the past, that was sort of the distinctions that JCPC vetted the merit, they heard from the department heads, put forward what they thought was a, um, a sound capital plan, and then the finance committee focused on the financial piece of, can we afford this, and um, is it in line with our goals? Yeah. Um, the one thing that was unique, that is unique about the period that we're in is the four major projects really are un, an unprecedented um, for the town. We've, I cannot recall that during my experience working on the committees. And I think the last major building we built was the police station and it was at 89. And uh, so we just uh, now have this backlog of buildings and we're trying to manage it appropriately uh, in the last round of discussions that happened before the school committee vote, uh, we ended up, instead of JCPC having just the process we had, um, and Lynn was at it, um, uh, what we referred to as a five committee meeting because we added the um, DPW Fire Station Study Committee to that discussion, and otherwise it was the, the other four boards that you've all been referred to previously, to look at the sequencing of the, and the kinds of things that are in the analysis tool. Mm -hmm. And out of that came a decision to, uh, that we would probably need to do two debt exclusion overrides. The one that was certain was on the elementary school. The one that was likely was the library, but that was never, it was, never, it was a, not a decision-making body. The body that had the role of um, deciding what should get before the voters as a debt exclusion override was the select board. And the select board made the decision to make the, um, that we would place the schools in an override, but never had to make another decision. And the sequencing of the projects was always a little bit out there and un with uncertainty because at that point we were in a little bit of a different situation. We had um, where we were in a process with the Mass Board of Library or the Mass School Building Authority. We had an application in with no certainty as to what was going to happen with it with the Board of Library Commissioners, and we had uh, no place to put a DPW facility and no decision actually on what we would do with the location for a fire department at that point. So that's the history as to how it evolved, and I think that we now need to 
recognize that the process has to be right for where we are going forward. Yes. So building on what Sean just said about what the role of the finance committee is, like looking at the financial aspects, I think that's something we've been also we need to define clearly, you know, especially as it came up with the uh, the project in North, on Northampton Road. Like, what are we look are we looking at just the costs and affordability, and or are we looking at what makes a project a financial success, or you know, so we probably need to define what aspects of a project are we looking at as a finance committee. It's an interesting analogy to Northampton Road. I think that uh, the rest of you should feel free to comment on this, but. We were certainly getting some expressions from other members of our council that they did not want us to get into things that were outside of the, the what they viewed as a uh, financial role, but it was never defined as what the financial role was. And uh, more on that topic when we get to that on the agenda. If we're on it, I'm in, I'll, I've got thoughts, but if, I don't think we're there yet. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't mean to make yeah, that the not, topic, but just I, that I, is an example. Yes, of I liked your phrasing you to, that would make it a financial success, okay? Yeah. We're, That's important phrasing. Um, I think it's, we're sort of in the same place where we were with the, um, when I made the comment about uh, the percent for art we need to be very careful about not getting into things we're not on the posted agenda. The um, plan was is that this was going to be on the next agenda as the major topic so that um, it would come after the public forum. Uh, so I wanted to limit it. Um, you know, I'm not going to say no, but I would suggest that we limit the discussion on both of those, and that and percent for art the information that we might need to inform us, but not to actually discuss the topics because we haven't noticed it, it's not fair to the public. As well as being not being legal. Uh, I just, you know, if we're gonna transition to also start talking about the big projects and the tools, I just wanna say on the CPA projects more generally, I had a long list of financial questions, and what I attempted to do was send it through the chair in hopes that it would go to CPAC, but they didn't all go, I don't think. And then it was, if you have, as one counselor, a long list, you don't want to dominate the discussion. So trying to think of a way to um, interact earlier would work. And what's been interesting about it on a couple of them, someone heard I had extra and questions that didn't get answered. And so now I'm in an individual discussion with one or two of the projects, having them answer financial questions. You know, and it, so it's just like trying to figure out that we don't rush or we say we're going to have this much time. And how do I think what I probably should have done, I, Sonia saw some of my questions on the general CPUC project and answered them, but I could have sent them directly to the chair and had them decide whether it's project level answers or whether someone there could have answered. But I, I, it wasn't just that project, it was on land projects, it was on another housing project. I had a list and tried to do, focus on the dollar side of it. Yes, Sean. Yes. Along those lines, going back to sort of the very beginning of our conversation, um, so what I've heard is that for next year in JCPC, we want to build in early um, opportunities for input um, from several different sources. I'm just going to read them, and you can tell me if I've captured them and if there's other ones that I might be missing, because it'll be helpful to start thinking about this. Um, so obviously, the citizen requests, that would be one uh, mechanism. The town manager, we want his perspective early on in the process. We want to get counselors' perspectives early on in the process. Uh, the department heads, obviously, will come and, and make their presentations. 
we talked about a JCPC. We want to hear maybe from CPA at some point, whenever it makes sense, um, on what projects have gone there. Um, I think we might want to hear from the Transportation Advisory C Committee in terms of their backlog of projects. Are there other groups that maybe I missed or, or important um, yeah, just groups that we might want to also build into something for next year? I, I think the real trick is then to have those conversations in a way that the departments under which they would fall mm -hmm. are also part of the conversations. Right. Yeah. Because there, there may be very logical reasons why we're not going to proceed with X this year, or there may be very logical reasons, or we may find out that at the last minute we got to do X right. in the previous year, and that was part of that discussion we had last night of could we get a list of the final projects that we actually get done each year so that we actually see what DPW has done. Sure. So it's... Okay. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I think if we structure it, hopefully if we structure where that input's early enough, we can r get the, the, the response from department heads and the, the planning um, so that we can have a, a full response to if, something, if we don't do something, here's why or here's where it fits in the future. But I agree with that point. Yeah. No, I think that that's a good point and a good way to summarize it. I think that we all recognize the reality of the budget um, and the constraints on the budget and the amount of money we have. And it was obvious in last night's forum because we had set aside 9.5% for capital. We have to pay our debts and we had an amount left. And, uh, you know, the uh, members of the uh, fire department staff through their union were here and um, talked about the equipment needs. But the uh, ladder truck that they were t uh, made reference to and what they said was about, about the uh, ladder truck, I can't in any way disagree with. Um, I've been hearing about the ladder truck for a lot of the years, but it's also, uh, I think it was $1.3 million piece of equipment. And uh, the question is, how do you fund the purchase of that size? And uh, we also recognize that we're actually one of the few departments, maybe the only department in Western Massachusetts with a ladder truck of that size. And uh, it's used as much for um, inter, inter community um, assistance um, as it is for fires within our own community because it is such a unique piece of equipment and how we scope that. Uh, so these are not simple issues, but in the end, it isn't that we didn't want to spend money on a new ladder truck, but uh, we also had a limited budget and um, we were back to the question of the recommended priority which I think there was pretty wide consensus on that our roads really need attention and that that was where the priority was. Uh, and I might make the same comment even more briefly about the operating budget that, you know, people have talked about things that they've identified that they would like to see on the operating side, but uh, the highest priority I think for the all components, libraries, the schools, and the municipal departments managed by the town manager was, we provide important service and we need to make sure that we have the funds to continue the services that we provide. And uh, there wasn't much left over. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because last night when that whole issue of the big ladder truck came up, I vaguely recalled that we had had a discussion about was there a way to get regional funding for that equipment and didn't and did I didn't want to bring it up because it just didn't I didn't have any more information than to say there would be a desire to have a regional contribution to that so but I wanted to check back with the group and say, am I right? Did I, re I remember that, that as well. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I heard that also, that it's a regional resource, so it would be nice to be 
figure out re regional, finan regional yeah. financing. And the sure. other part of the discussion is which buildings really, ladder trucks are sometimes used to get really deep into a property, but for really tall buildings, there are only a few really tall buildings to which the ladder truck applies. Um, so, you know, just trying to think of it's a resource for whom. Um, yeah, yeah, I was going to sure. say, those tall buildings around the UMass campus, and um, do they have their uh, own? They said it's not big enough for UMass, and it can't be used for UMass. So I don't know yeah. what UMass does, but they ruled out no, UMass. They don't, it's, it's just not how, the, how fires are fought uh, in New York. You wouldn't, you know, when it came down to the World Trade Center, you didn't have ladders that could you, reach. You didn't have ladder trucks. Um, and uh, the... Um, value of ladder trucks as was presented in that discussion at JCPC was that it enables you on even a house fire to get elevation and to uh, use elevation to try and help fight the fire from up down, up down. and uh, but the, when you get to a taller building like some of the taller buildings at UMass, it's not going to do that any more than... Uh, the other piece of equipment. Okay. Well, the comment I was <clears throat> going to make is that we, were, the decision last night was, yes, we understand this is very important, but we have made a commitment to roads and sidewalks. And on Friday, I did another byline thing with Stan, it was Steve Schreiber and me, and it was about the new CRC committee. And we talked about lots of things, and after it was over, I said, I didn't mention roads and sidewalks and to say that this is something big we've done. At that point, the young man who was the filmmaker comes up to me and said, what are you going to do about the roads? And he went on about how he rides his bike and we're supposed to be a bikeable town and you can't. And I thought, boy, this topic, it is the thing that every single person talks to us about. So we, it's, it's a hard decision. Um, I mean, and, and I do feel the fire department people compared to the public are very understated. Um, and we have to really listen to them, but we have to listen to the issue of the roads and the sidewalks now. And um, when Kathy told me ab about a couple of weeks ago that you can tell what town you're in by the roads, I did not believe her. And I have since found out it is totally true. You can tell exactly where you are. Uh, except that I hear people in Northampton saying the same thing about their roads and sidewalks that people say here. So... And when I've driven out Bert's, Bert Pitt's road to a friend's house, I have to say that that's as bad as any road that I've seen, though I think they're working on it finally. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. One other thing I'll just show you as a sidelight is I've had this discussion with the town manager. Um, under, when, when Mr. Musanti was town manager, we did take out a bond and um, did a whole lot of roads um, at once by taking out a bond and paying it back over time. And uh, Northampton is in that process now of taking out a bond for their roads, which is why we're all uh, kind of aware of it who are paying attention to this minutia. And the counter argument is that if you build a school with a bond, uh, the school's gonna outlive the bond. If you put a, do a road with a bond, there's no way that the uh, road is going to outlive the bond. The bond will, you'll be paying back the bond when you still have to deal with the road. I think we should turn the topic over to um, the um, analytical tool, unless there's anything else that needs, can be added now. The, the clarification again, when do, are we setting, uh, I mean, when are we going to have those conversations about the process and all, is, will it be like the, in, the, in these type of meetings and we continue the conversation or are we going to dedicate it and put it as part of an agenda and focus on defining our role and the process and then have those meetings with JCPC? John, do you... So at least as it relates to JCPC, um, there's a small group of us that are going to meet to come up with a new, not maybe not new, but a revised um, calendar schedule process for next year. Um, and I think we're going to meet over the summer to do that. So at least for JCPC, I think we'll be thinking about that when we develop that uh, revised process. 
And I think that we will start the process as a part of the general process <coughs> at our July meeting, as we previously discussed. We set out our plan for the next meetings. So, um, why don't we turn the attention to the uh, question of the major project analysis tool and uh, where we are with it and then comments as since we were the body that was looking at it and commenting. Do you want me to do a quick yes. overview and then we can get into yes. feedback and comments? Um, so this is beta one, uh, as we discussed, having titles. So this is the very first draft. Um, I think you've all had it for several weeks now. So um, it includes an instruction tab, which I think probably needs to stay there no matter what version, how, how this gets changed in the future. I think having an instruction tab is helpful. Um, has a glossary. I just sort of started a glossary. Um, if there's other terms we think should be added, but really the terms here relate to things that are in the workbook um, to help people understand what those terms may mean or more information on those terms. It has um, this page, which you've seen before, which may be a page we want to think about. This allows people to estimate the costs of the, the various projects under different scenarios. Um, it can be a little confusing if you don't have a close working knowledge of you know, the different options and, and how, just how these things all interrelate. So um, if we do keep this tab, we probably would want to maybe streamline it some more or do more instructions to, to help people understand it. But again, the, the basics of this tab is um, this base cost estimate is sort of a fixed cell. This is based on information um, we've gotten from architects or it's an, an average of information we've gotten from, from different architects and different reports. Um, in some cases, um, we've just taken some round numbers based on prior estimates um, for the DPW and fire station, for example. Um, then it allows you to set the year, so you can play around with what year you think the project will be done. That drives cost escalation, so if you say it's going to be done sooner, there's less cost escalation. If it's, you're saying it's going to be done in 10 years, then, then the cost escalation really adds up. Um, it also allows you to play around with what you think the net zero premium is, which again, maybe that's not something we want people to play around with. There's mostly pretty good information on sort of what that average cost is. Um, so, but it'll let you add that in to the numbers. And then it pops out a, a total cost based on when you do the project. So just for example, the library total cost is 35.6 million estimate right now. If we did it in 2023, um, based on when this estimate uh, was done, there would be, um, there's actually no escalation because it was already, that original number I think was already escalated to that year. Um, and so that would be the, the total number. Um, for some of these other ones, if the, the estimated number was based on a specific year, then the cost escalation would, would kick in. And then, so really all that is just to get you the inputs for this uh, sheet. So. Um, this is the sheet that you pop in the numbers, the year it's going to happen, how long the bond will be for, um, whether it's a debt exclusion or not a debt exclusion, how, what percentage of grant funding you think there will be for a project, and then also how much you think we need for ongoing capital needs. So that's everything else that JCPC does. Um, and then all of that, along with our existing debt, gets rolled into this chart over here. And this, the black line going across that chart is how much available funding we have and an estimate of available funding in the future. And those bars are the, the payments out of the money we have available. So the, the green bars are existing debt. The yellow bar is tied to the ongoing capital. So if you change that to three million or four million, that, that bar is gonna grow. And then these other colors are tied to the, the new projects. So in this particular example, you only see fire department DPW because it's got the school and library checked as a debt exclusion, which would come from a different source. Um, if we uncheck those, for example, oh, there's no dollars there. Let me go up here. Oh, down here. So if you, or if you check it and you say it's not going to come from debt exclusion, then you see the schools pop into that, and you can see we start to go over. Um, there's also this. Uh, area here where it says affordability amount over the 10% levy. So this is just a, a sum of 
how much those bars exceed the black line over all the years. So it's not exceeding it by 30 or 38 million in one year, it's sort of the total of all the, all the years that it goes over. Um, so again, this is another sheet that it's very open and flexible and people can put whatever they want in there and there's some benefits to that, there's also some drawbacks to that and so we, you know, I've heard some feedback that we may want to put some guardrails in to kind of keep the assumptions and the inputs to, to a certain range so that they're um, realistic. Um, and yeah, and then you know we, this borrowing capacity analysis. You know the new information we had since last time that our financial advisor updated us on was that school debt is not subject to the borrowing ceiling, to the um, the yeah the, the ceiling. Um, so that should make a big difference in terms of if we're going to bump up against that ceiling. So we would have to adjust for that. And then the last one just shows the debt exclusion impact on an average property. And we talked about maybe having some other numbers in there to show if you're above average or below average by X dollar. Um, but this shows the, you know, the, the high point of the debt exclusion and what the addition would be to property taxes. And then as that winds down, as the, as the principal's paid off. So that's the quick that overview. Right. I'm trying to get through these last charts, and for some reason, whatever you emailed is, isn't allowing that. Yep. It is. You've got to scroll, just scroll down. Go on to the thing called variable chart and keep scrolling down, Lynn. Got it. Got and then it it loads a little slowly, and you need to probably download it to your drive because it doesn't work very well when you're in the Excel online. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's a slower transmission. Okay. okay, so I have a, excuse me. Here, go ahead. I have a couple questions. Do we start borrowing? At what point do we start borrowing for a project? For example, in this year's capital project, we've identified potentially three projects, two for schematic design and one for match to MSBA. Would, I assume those are borrowing, right? And we would borrow those within this year because we would go out and retain, if we, moved, if we were moving forward, we would go out and retain the company to do the schematic design for both DPW and FIRE. If, if depending on how long it takes, we, I know we anticipate having to add a little time to both fire and DPW because net zero wasn't there at the time the feasibility studies were done. I don't think we have a good estimate as to how much time we have to add, but we're throwing out around two months, okay? So the schematic design might take six to eight months, okay? If that is the case, and then that meant in FY21, you know, all things being amazing, we would actually start building a DPW. Is that the point at which we start borrowing? Can I ask a clarifying question? Are you asking, and I, you're very clear, but I just wanna make sure, um, is it when we start borrowing or when we would start paying on that borrowing? Answer it with, okay. I want to know at what point this now becomes part of our debt. So I'll start, and Sonia can correct me if I'm wrong. So we'd start borrowing in whatever year we think we're going to start having costs, and we'd borrow just what we need to cover those costs. And That's so we're paying, it's a pay-as-you-go right. to so we, on a building schedule. You get, get to X and we pay Y. Right, paying okay. from the, the money we borrowed. But in terms of paying the... Borrowing off, um, I believe in the past it's typically we've done it typically when the project is complete and we know exactly what that number is. It's convert. You usually use a, a temporary borrowing while you're doing the project, and you convert convert that to a permanent borrowing when the project's done, and then you have a payment schedule. So the so we 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 would borrow as we go throughout the project and it's being completed. When we'd actually start making payments on that, you could potentially make interim payments on that throughout the while the project's going on, but I think you generally convert that to a permanent 
bond and then have a schedule. And how, d how does the temporary borrowing during dis construction fit in this chart? Go ahead. So when you vote a borrowing authorization, like theoretically the 250 for schematic design, that gives us the authority to go out and contract with, uh, with a, um, whoever, uh, architect that does the design. And once they start doing the work, as long as we cover what we paid them by fiscal year end, we won't have any deficits. So normally we do a short-term borrowing once a year to cover borrow any contracts that we borrowed for and we've spent money on so we don't end up with a deficit at year end. When you go to do the actual project, it would be another borrowing authorization. So we'd have like two separate debts for this. And, um, typically we would keep the schematic design probably as a rollover debt, which is like paid back in five years and we don't actually bond permanently for it. When the school project is authorized and we, we have the authorization to go ahead and get a contract for that, then we would just borrow you know, 10 million in the first year because we know we're only gonna spend 10 million. And we would do it with short-term borrowing and just pay short-term interest on that until the project was completed. And then we would go out for a permanent bond and we'd start paying debt service for 30 years. Or and your permanent bond pays off your temporary? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. You know, so it it it, it you're rolls into a permanent it bond with yes. some interest rate right. in between. And so, right. what is sort of factored in here is so in those interim years where you're doing short-term borrowings or temporary borrowings, there's you do have to pay the interest. So if you're not even if you're not making a principal payment, we're obligated to pay the interest, which on a a large project can add up. Um, and so I believe in the projected this ongoing capital um, part of what would have to come out of there is that the interest payments which will be part of our projected and then existing debt number. So just to stay with the hypothetical, mm -hmm. okay? Suppose we were able in FY20 to do a schematic design for DPW mm -hmm. that would allow us to then bid and start building in FY21. And I don't know how long it takes to build a DPW, maybe two years. Okay, so if you were looking at the gray bars, would that move them up to FY 23? So the one thing that's confusing about this, can be confusing about this tool, which is just sort of a caveat of when you use it is, there, again, there's a year you begin and the year you pay it, and so it wouldn't start coming out of here until we start paying it because it's not going to start coming out of the, the money available to JCPC until we have a, a debt schedule and we're making those premium payments, uh, premium, premium and interest payments. So let's say the project was started in 2023, finished 2024, 2025. We converted that to, a, uh, again, the long-term debt at that point and started making premium payments. Then 2025 would be the right year that we would start making that payment or maybe the year after. Um, but it's usually gonna be a couple, the, the payments on the projects are usually gonna be a couple of years after when the project begins. So if the project began in 2021 and it finished by 2023, mm -hmm. would we need to move the gray bars? Up maybe 2024 or end of 2023, right. depending on the timing of all of it. Okay, so that's one question. The second question is, right now interest rates are very favorable. Mm -hmm. But by the time we would convert these, they may not be. Right. Is there any way? To lock in low interest rates? Yeah. Um, we can ask our financial advisor. I, I, I don't I'm know just, how we would without <laughs> projects being approved and, and knowing exact dollar amounts, but we can ask if there's, you know, what steps can we take, you know, other than just moving as fast as possible? Uh, are there any other steps we can take to try to uh, take advantage of low interest rates? Right, especially, I mean, because sometimes, I know at the university, when the interest rates would go low, we would refinance right. Right. on well, our ref debt. Yeah, refinancing is different from advanced from financing, and uh, I'll turn to Sonia to help me with this, and, uh, because you get into a complicated process that I always had to rely on others like Sonia to explain if it, we got there, which is arbitrage. 
and yeah. whether we're yeah, um, can violating on. arbitrage rules. Yeah. Thank you. The other piece, though, that if we so this assumes that we would not go out for the fire station as a debt exclusion. Currently, yeah. Again, this is just a, a sample. This but yeah, can right even now play it's play with that. Right now, like if, so, if I inject it, then it comes out. Um, okay. Now, the, the, uh, what you took out was DPW. Oh, fire. Yeah. yeah. So if we if you uncheck this box, that means you're saying you do want it to be a debt exclusion, so that that would come out. But then your bar down here goes up in terms of the impact on the property values because the, the the impact on the tax rate is higher. Well, that and and the other piece, I guess, I want to clarify is, we all had that aha moment when we were sitting here, and heard that the town side of an MSBA match it's not part of the debt ceiling. Yeah. Is not part of the debt ceiling. Yep. And you verified that now. Yes. Yep. However, it doesn't mean the taxes can bear it. Right. It just exactly. means it's not part of the debt ceiling. Yeah. And long before, you know, the financial advisor was pretty clear, like, you still even don't want to go that close to your debt ceiling, <laughs> preferably. You, you wouldn't go, you know, up to your debt ceiling just from an um, operation standpoint. That, that means you're taking on quite a bit of debt, so. Right. Yeah, because ultimately, it turns Ultimately, we need to think about the impact on our uh, residents who are paying property tax, and uh, that's part of what we're managing. Dorothy, did you have something? Uh, just a quick question. Um, the compar comparable interest rates for short-term borrowing versus long-term borrowing, at least as of this moment, because... It's inverted right now. It's, it's a completely weird interest curve. So yep. our financial advisors told us to use 5% for long-term, for our long-term planning. Um, I think that's conservative compared to what the rates actually are, but that's just the, yep. the number he's advised that we use to be safe. Yeah, I just want to say, right now we're, well, an inverted in interest curve means the short-term rates are higher than the long-term rates. And when that has happened in the past, it's usually meant we're heading for a recession, but, but that's just yeah. a correlation. Sure. Um, but the long-term rates right now are in the 3% range. Sure. You know, when I'm checking across, even going down to not as high a rating as we are at A's, out 20 and 25 years. So one of my, I, I shared with everyone, I just sent it through now since we're mm -hmm. in public. I sent. Sean, a bunch of comments on the model on a, even if the advice is five, show us a three, mm -hmm. um, you know, allow us to have that be one choice. Sure. Um, and you'd have to get someone to approve you doing that, um, you know, in terms of we don't want to be overly optimistic on it, but, but it, it interplays a lot with the, uh, with the, with how much debt and so then I had a, a, a several other questions that are more picky, but mm -hmm. it, the model allows you to choose the price tag for these projects. And I wanted to limit it sure. to the range of um, someone thought it was possible. For example, I don't want to try to have someone plug in five million for a school. You know, just on a, you know, if we think 40 is the best guess, is 30 the lowest it could be? and and either that or fix it so you can't choose it at all, but don't let us choose it at too low a rate. Um, so I, I've shared with everyone now my comments on it because I was trying to do move things around. And one of the things if you um, take, well, it doesn't really matter, but if you look, if you look even out at his bar right now, for a couple years, we're under our cash limit. You know, so we, we have room to spend more. So I wanted to know if it would be possible to say in the years, and if and Lynn, if I don't make you, the construction start earlier than 2025, we have three, or three years of that. Could we do some of our catch up with other things yeah. during those years so that we're at, because two and a half million, what he's built in is two and a half million, we're spending 
three and a half now. Right. Yeah. So you the, know. The you know. So it's some. It's tight. It's a tightening of belts. But if we could spend more in the years before the big buildings come online, you know, it, so the model makes it look like it's all hitting there. But if I want to spend more and then have a few years, I was spending less. Yeah. Yeah. No. I think that's a good point. I think so. The way it's set up now is that the 2.5 million kicks in in 2021. Um, because at one point that was the first year we thought a project could start, so that's when it kicks in. Um, but I and re realistically, this would pro that gap would be spent on other capital projects through the JCPC process or set aside for for um, the larger projects. But you're right, um, using this opportunity then to, the other to thing address I, backlogs. The other thing I couldn't do with this. Um, was uh, I'll do a hypothetical on one project. Sure. Suppose library, you decided you would do it more the JCPC route rather than for, for larger reasons that the $6 million doesn't get raised. We don't think we can go up to 15.9, but mm -hmm. you said there's a roof, there's a this, there's a this. Can we break it up into pieces? Yeah. And I can't easily do that with this design. So the best I could do is like put in a number like 12 million. And so, you're, so you're saying if we don't do the new building and we did the deferred maintenance, the And we did the, the deferred maintenance. And I didn't, I, then I also didn't know if you know you're gonna do deferred maintenance over four years in pieces, can you bond, can you debt, can you go out and raise a bond saying I'm gonna do this in a series of five steps. I'm not building a new building, but I'm doing major repairs and I'm gonna borrow it all. Can you? So then this model works fine because I can put another number in um, for when I think that would start. So I didn't know whether I could. So if you did, I mean, again, this isn't, I'm not saying this is ideal, but just if you wanted to do it like this, you could change that square on the library project, say put 10 million, 10 million in as the, what the deferred maintenance is take out the grant piece because now there's no longer a grant for that. Um, and then uncheck the debt exclusion if we don't think it's gonna come from there. And that will sort of estimate what those, if you see the purple little bars that are in there okay. now, and that'll that's, estimate that's the additional. Was, so the model lets me do that then? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of being a little, um, it's, it's adapting it from what its original purpose, but you could get to that um, okay. estimate. And when I was, just so everyone knows, I was playing with this a lot on how much debt exclusion could I avoid, and the answer is not very much. Um, you know, that, oh, I'm just gonna do one building. I couldn't find any one that was enough. Right. <laughs> you know? So if I just do one, and right. then I did a combination of fire station and school, and that was a pretty good combination if those were the two. You know, on a, which two might it be, because we haven't made that decision yet, but, but looking at what happens if. Um, so the tool allows you, and I got asked by another counselor last night on this package, JCPC, because it assumes two are out. Right. And he said, have we made that decision? I no, said, I no, just, yeah. no, but it, and the, it was just plugged in, yeah. And the challenge I see that's gonna be really difficult is, you know, as you noted, getting down to this 2.5 million from what we're currently spending, because this 2.5 million is for everything. Um, so that's going to be a large challenge in itself, just coming up with a plan in the future that gets us down to that number. And then the other one I asked, and this is, I think, Sean is rightfully holding off rebuilding this until there's consensus <laughs> about, but um, I asked this in JCPC, in the years where we have multiple buildings in a crunch, would it be possible to go to 10.2, 10.3, 10.5 in terms of a set aside? Um, for capital and having the other thing the fire station people handed out last night is the staffing issues at the fire station, you know, that in the operating budget they're suffering, you know, aside from equipment. But I didn't know whether it's even possible not to right think now. about this. So if it's not possible to think about it, I wouldn't want it in the model. But I was thinking like for three years, yeah. put in 10 and a half and then go back to 10. I think it's a choice. I think it's possible, um, and it's a, it's a variable we could, again, with ranges, say, you know, 10 and a quarter, 10 and a half, maybe up to 11 at the most. Yeah, there's um, there's it's clearly a, it's a something off, between but, 10 and yeah. 5. Yeah. Um, but I think it's, I don't think there's any rules against it that I know of, so um, I think 10 was just picked as a, 
an improvement on where we were at the time. So I don't know if there was. Well, it's also because the uh, financial policies of the town say that the goal is 10 percent, and that we've been we know we've been struggling to ever get to 10 percent. Uh, so that we kind of knew that that was the logical ceiling from experience and policy. Okay. I, and I completely understand that this would be a major decision to even think about that. Um, and it, to me, it's interactive with if there's new growth. Um, this has been built into an assumption, but you're seizing more, you're basically seizing more of the new growth than for capital than for operating um, without knowing any way of can you live on the operating side. So if it's completely not feasible, you know, we got, to me, on operating, we got a gift this last year with what happened with health insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, you talked about it with schools, that 0.6, it's not gonna be 0.6 next year. <laughs> we can, we'll be lucky if we don't go back to four and five, but it's not, we got a breather of one year across all of our budgets. Yes. Dorothy. Um, I'm still concerned about the interest rates for short-term borrowing and for long-term borrowing, and, um, one of the ways you've shown how we can do things is by spreading things out. But what if you really believe that the interest rate's going to go up? I mean, I, I bought a house in the 70s. I remember high interest rates, and they really limit everything. So part of me feels this real pressure that we should really take advantage of the low interest rates now and do the borrowing and get moving very fast, because I think things are going to change. It, have you built that in or have thoughts on that? My thoughts are it'd be really difficult to do all those projects in a really tight time span. I think it's just the nature of it, they're gonna have to be spread out to some extent. So there's gonna be some projects that get borrowed five to 10 years, if not longer, in the future. Um, just from, from an affordability standpoint, I think it would be tough to take on all that debt all at once. Um, but we can, again, I, we can run that model and see exactly what that looks like. Um, I'm just speaking, I'm sort of not using this yet, so. And I guess the question is, you. Can you take on debt when you don't have a project you're paying for? It? No, you'd you know, have to start the project. I mean, that's you, the you, thing is you'd have to you start know, the like, project. We can't so. say we're envisioning three years from now we need $30 million, so we're going to borrow it. No, that speaks to Mr. Steinberg's point earlier yeah. about yeah. you can't borrow money and just let it sit there and earn interest. Yeah. Um, you, can't do, you, can't, right. you can't do that. Right. Um, <laughs> yes. So my thoughts about the model is partly based, Shalini, on um, you invited me to uh, come to a district meeting in your district and to present this, and I did. And what I found was in order to even explain the model to an audience, there was, it had some people in there who had some degree of sophistication with town uh, finances from serving on town meeting and finance committee even, that I had to do a PowerPoint um, explanation, which probably took me 10, 15 minutes um, of sort of explaining the entire process of, borrow, uh, of um, how we do capital. And I mean, I still have the PowerPoint at home, so I could pull it out as to what I did. But it was really essential to lay the groundwork so that people would understand the tool when they looked at the tool. And uh, so I'm a little bit concerned. I think it's great for us, and it would be great for some members of the public who have that sophistication, but I think that it could also be a source of tremendous confusion for a significant number of people and uh, that we could be setting ourselves up for either statements being made in uh, letters to the editor about, I looked at the tool and this is the result and then we have to respond to it, or people calling us up and spending a lot of our staff time explaining how the process works and why the, what they're saying doesn't work or whatever, however it works. 
I've got some concerns as to whether putting this out to the public in anything with this level of sophistication is really a, a practical thing. Just to add to what Andy said, and I think also having the baseline as the most optimistic figures, which are pretty unrealistic, mm -hmm. and that was the thing we ran into also, is we started off with what was the baseline, yeah. and it looked kind of, okay, that seems like we could maybe, but not realizing that those are very unrealistic right. figures. So maybe the base should be the more realistic figure to stop. Yeah, and I think some of the some of it is we're very early in the actual process for many of these projects as well. I mean, we haven't done, we don't have a good cost estimate. We have a sort of a high level cost estimate for DPW and fire station, but I think the schematic design is where we're gonna get a much better number. But I agree with you. I think having that information potentially early before this is, goes out would be helpful. Um, so that's um, it's just more based in um, a study. I, I agree. I, I agree with Andy's observations, but I also feel that there are some people who, I'm sure there's quite several, many people in, in Amherst who could actually understand the model. I think the biggest problem is people don't understand the building process and the borrowing process. And so by the time you get through that, you've exhausted most people's attention span and then trying to put it into the model. It just is like, hold it, I just learned what the building process was. I mean, I'm sitting here looking at this having spent four years thinking about building a DPW in fire and understanding schematic design, and yet I'm still asking questions, at what point do we borrow, and does it show here, and that kind of thing. And so it, the whole process of debt and building is what I think is gonna stymie most people. So in order to ever go out with a model, you've got to be able to go out with, this is how you build a project, and this is how you accumulate debt, and here are the rules around debt, and here is what it then looks like. I mean, I just played with this um, based on what you know, you've given us, and you know, trying to see you know, get things under the line and down to zero and all that other stuff. And I got there. And I, you know, I moved DP up, DPW up and I kept fire out for debt exclusion and I cut the price on DPW. <laughs> and then I cut a little bit, just a little, in the out years on the gold. But there's a point at which we might go up for one year or two in the gold area but down for one year or two in the first year of DPW because then you exceed the line. And I mean, it's, yeah. it, but then I have a bachelor's in mathematics. So, I mean, it's like, this is not for your average resident. And I'm, that's not, I'm not being critical. I'm just being, this is tough stuff. And yeah. I think if we can get to the point that there are five or six of us Absolutely. on the council who feel comfortable with this. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be lucky. Yeah. yeah, and I'd also just say, I think people, the public would also have to be very clear that you know, this is a planning tool and it's somewhat of a high level, it's got a lot of details, but somewhat of a high level planning tool as well. Um, there's a lot of assumptions, you know, we're going out 30 years. When we get to, you know, this may help drive us towards a plan or a configuration that we like, um, but ultimately, when we get to that configuration, we're going to work with our financial advisor to get, you know, very detailed um, schedules with more detailed interest rates um, based on the, the the time that we're at. Um, so that's another thing I would just want people to be clear: like this is this is sort of a high-level planning tool to help drive us, um, push us in the right direction in terms of a configuration. Um, 
but the, again, there's a lot of assumptions, you know, that just could be different when you're thinking you're looking 30 years down the road. So, so I, I also did a presentation um, with this, and I decided to make my life simpler than you made yours, Andy. Um, I went back to Sean, and I got him to do three stylized scenarios that were extremes of each other. You know, the first was uh, best guess on the cheapest school option that he's got, yeah. um, and no overrides. You know, a couple of overrides, and I forget what, and then spread them out. And I just did those PowerPoint charts, you know, the final results, with some lead-in bullets. And it worked extremely well for people. Um, this graph, uh, understanding that we only had so much money, and if you went higher than that, we weren't doing it. Um, getting to talking about the tax side, and they said, you're going to have really hard decisions to make. You know, that was their conclusion, you know, thinking about you know, what were the most important buildings to them. Um, and some people listed fire first, you know, I, and others, yeah. school was always one of the top two. Yeah. But if, so one possibility would be, you know, get this working so some council members can think interactively if they need to. And I did things, so Sean did, you know, an example like um, I had two of the buildings not built till 2027 and 2032. You know, I moved them way out. But to do a few stylized examples to show you didn't necessarily get out of the hard decisions, right. but you got more under the line years mm -hmm. with some combinations than others. So one thought would be, you know, whether it's five, six, seven, what I call stylized, frozen, Options, yeah. so it's not an interactive tool. And we're showing what happens with a under this, under that, under whatever, which is when I've looked at, um, you know, and then, then you can also simplify the graphic, you know, because I just did a, here's the price of each of right. these things on page one, because I didn't allow the price to vary. Um, but that's the way I've seen federal uh, groups when they're talking about some options. Behind the scenes, someone was modeling, but they just put out a few different, they call them scenarios, you know, to show you the impact of deciding this, that, or the other. Um, so not having it be that everyone can click all the boxes. Um, um, I just want to comment that, that this is a political process and that the council has two more years or two and a half more years to go and I think we have to make really strong and firm headway because so often in government, um, if something is being in the process or not really done and then new people come in, it doesn't happen, it languishes. Yeah. And uh, right now we have the commitment and we have to find some way to move forward um, as firmly as we can. Which will be a subject that we're gonna have to talk to probably in a different forum, but uh, you know, we are, uh, with some things, we have to see where we are with the location for uh, land for DPW so we can move forward there. But the biggie is um, Sean's friends with MSBA. Mm -hmm. He needs to light their fire, with, <laughs> and he's trying to figure out how. Is can that I correct? But can I ask on fire in DPW, you know, with the, if we enter schematic design phase, we're looking at to the extent they could share the current site at all. Um, they cannot. But, but not building the full version of DPW land, building part of DPW? There is not enough land at the present DPW site to share that, to share it between the two, even, I mean, we actually looked at this. We, we looked yeah. at, could we build the fire station on the front part of the DPW where this, more of the wood stuff is? and so forth, but the problem is you can't do anything without tearing the vast majority, if not all of DPW down. And so, and when it comes right down to it, the, for the fire station, you need at least three acres, and for DPW, you need at least eight. And, 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 and DPW is trying to consolidate everything in one place. Yeah, I understand yeah. that, and, it, it, and there's, and there, okay. it, Ultimately, as we go through schematic design, 
and say, you know, it's not going to be a $35,000 building. It's going to be a, you know, $28,000 building. They may, the compromises may be not everything's going to get consolidated. First of all, there's two things that never get consolidated, and one is your water, and the other one's your sewer. Yeah. They're, they're going to stay right where they are because they are. Um, but you, um, so as you look at DPW, the reason to put that schematic design is so that we can make those tough decisions right. and also look at something that this model doesn't allow, but over time it would, uh, and that is whether or not we stage um, DPW in a way that we build some now and maybe, for instance, some of the equipment, it's best if it's under minimal heating. Others, it's okay if it would just be under cover. That would be an improvement, a vast improvement over what we have now. Um, so what you, know, what you put under uh, minimal heating is a, much, is a higher cost than just getting something in a Quonset hut. Um, I mean, that's pretty, yeah. being pretty severe. So, I, you know, I've just had a couple different people say, because they share showers, for example, you know, like... No, they can't. And, so and, the, and you're answering, no, we've looked at that. Yeah, okay. I mean, it, we have looked at it. The reality is that right now our fire, and our fire and emergency people, they don't even have the proper decontaminant uh, um, space. And decontamination space for fire is different than decontamination space for ambulance. And the reality is for DPW, you really don't need decontamination space because you're not out um, with carbon and, or you're not out with potentially um, drugs and stuff like that. You're basically out in the open. So it's, it's a very different operation and it, it's, we have looked at it, and it's not, it's not emerged as an option. Yeah. So to recap what I've heard so far in terms of um, my next steps in terms of uh, improving this is uh, potentially make it so the interest rate on the borrowings can be adjusted within reason. Um, making it so the prices are fixed, but also can be adjusted within reason for each of the projects. Um, allowing the tax levy that's dedicated towards capital to maybe go up a little bit more, um, again, making it a fixed option that people can pick. Um, including more info on the building and borrowing process, um, and then potentially seeing how this works, maybe just setting it up so there's different scenarios people can pick. Pick an option that lays out what that option is, and then these charts would adjust based on what that person picked, and we can you know, identify what those scenarios are, um, and that would limit maybe unintended use of the tool. Yeah, I guess my thought was, because uh, I've been obviously pondering this for a while, one was uh, built on um, Kathy's comment that for some level of people and charts that have, here are a bunch of options we looked at. If you look at all of them, you can contrast but not actually give them an interactive tool at all, just give them the charts. The, the end charts. The second thing was is that if we're going to have an interactive tool, that we exercise a little bit more thought about how we bring people in to use that. Mm -hmm. And it may be that uh, at the initial stage, that in order to get access to the tool, that people need to attend a workshop. Mm -hmm. and that we sponsor a workshop in which we explain the background and they can actually sit down where IT can set up a group of computers and people can use them um, as an interactive learning session. But I don't, um, I th what that would do is only people who are serious enough that they would want to spend the time will do that and that they will then be people who self-select. We we're not picking them by politics. We're picking them by uh, 
willingness to put in the time to learn it and their sophistication and understanding of the technology. Those are the kinds of things that we could do that would make it available to some segment of the public that's best able to use it. And, and are you suggesting that those people that we train actually then are able to demonstrate to others? Um, I think that we need to decide, and I'm not sure I'm there yet, as to whether um, they can access it through computers that are on site only or um, they can then have access to it at home. I think that's things that we have to think about. But for people who have the, the time and the sophistication and the level of interest that we do something to make it available because we said we would. I, the, the bottom line is there is a point where we're subject to public records. Right. <laughs> That's what I was so yeah. I'm not sure that once, I mean, even now, somebody could ask for this. That's an interesting question, and we would probably need to talk to our public records um, expert as to are any um, analytical tools as opposed to um, a part of a public record. Um, does this must also, I, I just imagine Boston, they must have some analytic tools like this that they meet and talk about, mm -hmm. but they don't give open access to the entire range of what the tool can do. Um, you know, so the question yeah. is how much he, Sean could limit even more some of the things one can do with this. Right. Um, you know, with so only fixed price points and only a few decisions to make it more like a child's yeah. building and, set that and, <laughs> you can't build a building that falls over or something. You and know, honestly, um, if somebody was really good at Excel and that so much that they want to use this tool, they could probably build something like this themselves. Build, the inputs build are not, it themselves. It's um, not. They're not anything like proprietary. It's what's the cost of the building? How many years? What are the interest rates? You know, it's not. It's not um, you know, there's not. It's not that complex in terms of the inputs. It's just complex in terms of all the formulas and tables that sort of feed into it. But um, the inputs are pretty. Uh, people know what they are for the most part. Well, I, I would not say that people who attended a workshop could then go teach others. That would be certifying them, and I think that's going beyond. But I think if you have a workshop that's announced to the public and that the public is not chosen but self-selects, what it, what it means is that a few more people who care might understand it better. But it, let it stop at that point, and that way I think it's safe. Yeah. Anything else that we you want to hear from us or that? Uh... Yeah, I think the last thing is just you know, were there any either on this screen or this screen, and maybe we do away with this screen. Um, you know, was there anything that was particularly confusing in terms of just this the layout? Is, this screen is not interactive with the other one. All right, so that's why I was thinking maybe doing away with the screen and maybe modifying the other one to factor in some of these pieces. So that there's really just one page that people I, have to go to. I would agree with that. Okay. And I, I forget whether I sent you what I ended up using, but instead of that screen, yeah. um, I had a bullet point on here are the choices I'm gonna have to make. Yeah. You know, is it two schools or one school? Is it, you know, what year, you know, so I did, information-wise, and then just put price tags on it. Because right. the other thing, if, if you try to use this tool, which is why I had him do a few pictures for me, um, the font is so small, because print, yeah. it's got so much information, yeah. that unless someone is sitting right here, you can't see most of it anyway. So think in terms of it, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. what's an easier... Optically. Yeah. 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 Um, this particular page, the value of it for me is that it is a way of going back and saying what is a reasonable estimation of a cost of a facility. Mm -hmm. And 
that we need to provide people to get an idea. In the schools, we do it because you give so many different options of schools that people sort of understand this is the cost that would attach to getting this. Um, with DPW um, or library, what gets confusing is, is that uh, people think about, well, uh, we're talking about the Cadillac of uh, whichever, and um, what, what if I put a lower number in because I don't want a Cadillac, but they don't, they, they need to get some understanding of what it is they're giving up by plugging in the lower number. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for the DPW and fire station, these numbers are already reduced from you know, what the projections were from the, the, the high level uh, cost estimates. I would, if you keep this page, I would make it static. Yeah and be very clear that this was a starting place. Yeah. And then have only the place where you can plug and play be on the tool side. And it also could be confusing for somebody who looks at the schools and says, well, obviously this one's the cheapest, so let's go with this one, but they don't realize, well, you have to do two of these or one of these, right? <laughs> um, so. Yeah, and that was one of my design, it says yeah. you have to either pick column A or Two of, yeah. Or four and five. Right. You, you can't get away with yeah. picking one 315 person school. Right. Yes. If, if you go to the variable chart, I just have another qualifying thing, and that is if you go in, say with DPW, and you move the date earlier, okay, does that then do the adjusting on the fact that it doesn't cost as much? because you built earlier? It would only do it if you went to um, this page and changed it to, uh, sorry, down here. Uh, seems like it might be locked up on me. Why is it locked up on me? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I'll figure it out, but in general, you, what well, you'd have to do, again, that's why we might streamline this, but you'd have to change it on the, this page first, and that would change what the cost estimate was, and then you would take whatever that number was and pop it in here. And there's no way to build that into... I think we can, yeah. I think there's a way to... So that it would all be in this It would, could just be a one-stop Right, because I, I did what you did, and I moved it two, day, two forward. Well, then I had to start reducing either the cost of DPW and or the cost of the right. annual amount that we would put forward. Sure. And I kept wondering, well, did that really take into right. account yeah, no, what, that by doing two years earlier, it cost less to build? I'll try to combine them so it's just one click okay. as opposed to multiple. So I think we need to uh, cut this to an end. And uh, if there are other thoughts that you have, um, is it best to email you yeah. what, they, what they are or questions that come up as you play with the tool? Uh, going forward, but I think I, I really appreciate the discussion and the presentation, and so thank you. Yeah, thank you for the feedback. And uh, so let me just uh, do one thing really quickly because I know that um, we've gone a little bit longer than we wanted, and uh, one of our members needs to leave. Uh, I said about percent for arts that I had been working on an outline, and it is a work in progress. I don't really. Uh, I don't know where I get authorization or how I get authorization to, to, to move forward with it, but what I thought of for the finance committee was um, a series of questions. What is the cost of a half percent for each proposed new building uh, and uh, with the current estimated cost of that amount, what will be funded by borrowing what is the additional taxation for the average or median property to fund the public art as required by the bylaw? Third one, what, what is the amount of grants or other portions of revenue that may not allow this use? Fourth one was, is there a logical minimum size project in a budget below which it does not make sense to apply this proposed bylaw. And then fifth one, is there a maximum amount that would be uh, 
applied for application of the bylaw. And sixth was, should the portion of the budget that is used for zero net energy be applied to this purpose? So those were the six that I had thought of. What I was, the reason I wanted to just give you a sense of what they were was that if you have other questions um, and can uh, email them to me, then I will assemble them and forward them along and uh, we might be able to get some help from our staff to have some answers to that available when we're discussing as opposed to just creating the discussion. And will you, and then you would send these also to uh, the people that have brought, brought it to us to make sure they come? I would, and of course, I want to make sure that they're noticed, which is why I did not want to have a real discussion. So the other the question, I had a general question on this, that if the town meeting voted and passed a version that I understand never made it into the bylaw officially for a particular reason, and we're looking at language that is a subset of that, where they've stripped off, but they didn't change, are we... In, in effect, starting all over again? Or are we trying to also honor what was done? I did, that's just a process I don't understand if it, it technically was passed as a bylaw and then it ran into a funding issue at the state level. It so was we a never, funding issue, it was an approval it issue. It was a pro an approval issue for a piece of it and they've stripped that piece out. So we're we're amending a bylaw that never went on the books because the whole bylaw didn't yeah. go on the books. So it was just, so, I, I didn't understand, because the actual language they're coming to us was the past language, minus a piece. <laughs> they did some editing. Um, actually, because I've been involved with this and, uh, and I'm now involved in the multiple levels of it, I worked as a member of the select board with um, Mr. Browdy is a member of the, um, is the chair of the Public Arts Commission on trying to refine the version, as did several other people. And it, he did make some modifications, but I've been aware of this um, from the beginning, well before it got to town meeting. So I've actually broken it down into issues for the, that I think are more appropriate for the um, Community Resources Committee and the third section was general questions about the bylaw as it is currently proposed by the Arts Commission because I, th um, I have some serious concerns about whether doing it in the approach of amending off of the previous bylaws the most logical or whether the most logical approach would be to address the questions from the finance and the CRC side have some discussion and then build the bylaw from scratch. That was my question. You know, so are we building, we're basically building a new, or are we amending an old? And that my, I, my I didn't need that answer now. I just thought that should be part of our discussion. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, my recommendation would be, um, and I, there's a piece to this, to build it from new. And the piece is that there's actually a lot that's in the um, bylaw as it was passed by town meeting, it still makes sense. So it's not like you have to throw, not use any of it, um, but I, I, you know, it's probably as far as I can go. So my question is, um, given that we have these capital projects and we need to have this bylaw in place before we get at, I, I guess, certain parts of these capital projects, in terms of timetable, um, after the two committees have done this, and then we bring it to the council and have a final discussion, what more time frame is there? What else has to happen? Or is this one of these things that takes two or three meetings or forums or what? Um, I have to leave that to Lynn a little bit too, but um, obviously this would be, since it's a bylaw, we need to go to GOL and uh, GOL has to have a very um, thorough review. Town council, our town attorney rather, has to have a very thorough review of it. Um, I'm not sure that the version as they presented it to us uh, 
even solves all of the problems that were identified by the uh, DOR attorney. Um, if I have that question, I think others might have that question who get into that level of the uh, process. So it's uh, gonna take a, a lot to get us through to the end, um, but I think that we need to have a process, we need to move the process along so that we can get the discussion uh, but the finance issues really are what I, as far as I'm concerned, what they defined. We have to make a decision as to how this stacks up against other demands on town finances. And if it turns out that it's a, not a huge financial factor, that's a lot easier to answer than if it turned out that it was a big cost. Yeah, Sonia. Okay. So. Yeah, Lynn. So when we passed the motion to refer, we said it first goes to CRC and to um, finance, and basically the understanding is they would report out either with a recommendation or that they need more time within 45 days. Once we get to the point we think we have a workable bylaw and the recommendation from those two committees, and that's a bunch of ifs in there, it would then go to GLL and also to legal review it, but I think we decided it should go to legal review even earlier because of the questions like Andy just raised. I wanna go back to something Kathy said, and that is, yes, town meeting passed this, but it never, and at that point, because we were that form of government, it had to be passed by the legislature, and that's where it got stopped the reality is, therefore, it is not a bylaw on the books. And even if it was, I didn't say we're gonna do this, but we could always repeal a bylaw. And the second thing is that now, because we've changed our form of government, we don't have to take it to the legislature. It's actually not the legislature to say it's the attorney general. That's Thank you. Um, the attorney, the, it went to the legislature because the, um, of the funding mechanism. And uh, I'll just tell, because Sonia is here and it only takes a second, is uh, establishing a maintenance fund within the budget still places funds into a special fund which is not appropriated on an annual basis by the council, and therefore I was not certain we had, that what they proposed back even got us over the hurdle. But um, I'm not looking for an answer to that question now. It is, the, it is the question in my third bucket of questions. I really did work at this. Uh, so with that, I think we're, is there anything else we want to talk about now? We know that the date of our uh, next meeting um, is going to be uh, Tuesday, the 20th. It's on the 23rd, right? And 25th. I'm sorry. Tuesday, 25th, the 25th. 25th. And, and uh, it's at 9.30? 9.30, we had scheduled the meeting. And uh, that a major portion we need to allocate to uh, the financial consequences of the proposed uh, Valley CDC request for CPA funds. So that motion to adjourn? Makes that such a motion. In the second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So it's unanimous and we are adjourned. And thank you very much, Amherst Media. We really appreciate your sticking with us. And it is um, 1140.